Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jana. I'm one of the registered nurses. I work and practice in state Queensland, Australia. I do upload a lot of nursing content, so feel free to go to my nursing playlist and check it all out. It's about studying, working, anything to do with nursing. And in today, we're going to talk about all your nursing related questions. It's going to be another Q&A session video. So I have gathered from you guys 32 questions in total so far, which I will be breaking into about five to six questions per video. And I also want to carry out a little bit more of a festive mood in my videos. So I'm wearing this beautiful dress that I prepped to wear on 24th of December for Christmas Eve to go with my partner to his family. But I thought I will add it to this video, guys, because it's such a beautiful dress. And I want to make my videos in December be a little bit more special and more festive. All right, so the first question is... How hard was it for you to work in your first year as a new registered nurse? It was quite hard. It was a combination of a couple of things back then. So after graduation, I have applied for a registered nurse position with aged cares around my area. And I have applied for a position there. I was freaking out to my core. I was so scared because I have never worked as a registered nurse, it was my first time and in the meanwhile, uh, while I was applying for um, RN position in HKs, I was waiting already for my grad year invitation uh, with one of the hospitals. I knew back then that I was accepted into a grad program, which I have applied during the mid um, time of my last semester when the portal was open. And I knew that I was accepted, but I didn't know which of three hospitals that I have nominated I would go to. And I also didn't know when I would start and which ward it's going to be. So I thought to myself, okay, I will go and I start somewhere. I couldn't start at the hospital because obviously they need experience. And this is why I was applying for a grad program. So I was like, okay, aged care is a perfect place to start. So I have started there. I told them that I have applied for a grad position. I was accepted. I told them the truth. And they knew that at some point I will leave. Okay, or maybe I will stay as a casual, whatever. So I worked for three months in aged care. I was freaking out. I was honestly freaking out. It was very hard, guys. Very hard in that sense that I never worked as a registered nurse autonomously by myself, leading the team, having ENs answering to me, you know, because EN works under supervision of RN. I worked as EN a little bit in my other HK facility when I was studying. So I had a bit of experience, but I didn't have experience of a leader, of a leader who leads the team of ENs, of AENs, responsible, you know, for a certain amount of residents and team members. It was hard. And I was fresh. I was new. I barely knew anything apart from just like a theory that was put into my head from my studies and from my clinical placements. So I had six days of supervision where I was working with another registered nurse and we were sharing the shift together in each and every day towards the end of my six days of practice with them. I was getting uh, more and more load to, uh, to the point when the last day, when I was still <clears throat> having the other nurse shadowing me to make sure that I have everything doing right, you know, if I have any questions, she's there to answer. I was leading already shift by myself, but that nurse was just there beside me to help me and make sure that I'm safe. But I was already leading the whole shift by myself. So I had those six days where I was supported. And then after that, during the three months before I left to the hospital, um, I had my CNs supporting me as well. So if I had any question and the other nurses on the floors that were either busy or didn't know, whatever, I could call my CNs. We had about four or five of them and they could lead me and answer, um, you know, to any questions that I had. Then I have moved to the hospital and I stayed in HK as a casual worker. And then I've got my permanent roster in general medicine ward. And this is where I started my journey um, of clinical practice. 
um, yeah, so that was my year. As a, as a grad registered nurse at the hospital, I was locked in in a contract of one year. I had nine modules to um, study and complete during that year, two assessments. I think it was uh, actually two assays, not assessments. It was two assays. One was big one, another one was smaller. I had two practical assessments or exams when um, in the beginning of the first year your preceptor would come and stay with you throughout, throughout the whole shift assessing you, making sure that you are safe, you're doing things correctly and then doing a report on you. And then by the end of the year they would do the second one and do a report, they will print it out and give it to you. I had also guided six or seven I think shifts at the hospital as well. So the nurses were helping me, I was never alone. The first I think two to three days as far as I remember I had my preceptor, one of the facilitators, you know, attached to us during the grad year. Uh, she would come and help me as well, do the most busiest like medication rounds, which would be morning and 8 o'clock at night if I'm on a PM shift. So that would help me there. They would come and just guide me through the procedures and policies. So this is how my first year was. It was a combination of two. I continued to be casual at HK because I loved the HK world. I loved how everything was there it was so different to the hospital and i personally wanted to gain experience and continue my experience going in these two different fields because i'm still in a state was and still am where i want to learn i'm not tired yet to get sick of learning you know um, I'm still in a state when I want to learn more, I want to discover more. So yeah, up until today, I'm still keeping these two jobs for myself. After graduation year, I have stayed on my ward up until today. And yeah, like I am liking it and loving it so far. I don't know where the next year will bring me. We will leave, we will see, but that was my first year. Then the next question is, what color scrubs can you wear as a nurse in hospital? What are the colors mean? Um, okay, so as a registered nurse, you would wear navy blue. And as an enrolled nurse, you will wear royal blue. It's like a lighter shade of blue. Then as an AEN, which means assistant of a nursing, you will, you will wear teal at least in my hospital. Then on Fridays, we can wear f um, funky scrubs. You can come in any color of scrubs. Well, don't come in green because it's a color of a doctor. You don't want to show up in green. If it's a plain green, don't do that. You don't want to come in uh, lilac or purple because this is the color for the pharmacies because that was just like spread confusion between <laughs> everyone. Um, so don't do that. But in terms of like pink, beige, you know, um, red, something that has prints on it, like I have recently ordered, I will show you the picture here of Gorman scrubs for December, which has like a bit of snowflakes and stuff. But I think I will wear those ones throughout the year as well. Like nobody knows it's flakes on it. Um, it's just a nice colorful scrub. Um, so you can come in something like that. Yeah, so you can wear um, different colors on Fridays. This is how it's in my hospital. Then uh, apart from Friday, um, you can come in your normal color, which is um, navy blue for registered nurses. And then the other colors as I explained for the other type of nurses. If you are a doctor, then uh, if it's a resident doctor, so you're just doing your residency, you're just out of your medical school, you're still gaining your experience, you will be wearing green scrubs. It would be a total set of green. If you're a pharmacist, it's either purple or lilac. If you are a um, branch or consultant, you will be wearing gray or black scrubs. If you are a surgeon or a surgical staff, you will be wearing really light, kind of like a sky color blue scrubs. And usually it's a scrub hat as well. So that would be it. Everyone else, um, yeah, AEN, so as I said, it would be teal. That's pretty much it. Most of the doctors would not wear scrubs. They would come just in the normal clothes. Um, then you would have your eat, walk, and engage people. You have physios. Physios usually wear um, 
navy blue, but they're not scrubs, they're more like, they have like a polo shirt, so everyone knows they are physios, uh, wound nurses, they can wear whatever, literally whatever, they have a beige. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Then in my age care, we do have a uniform, which is a combination of black and pink. I don't really like that uniform. <laughs> I get it for free anyway every year but I don't really like it so I bought my own scrubs from um, Airman, Zuri, Figs I have a video for you guys two videos of me testing different scrubs I will leave those two videos it's two parts part one and part two in the description box below have a look in um, through those videos I'm testing um, different colors and different brands of scrubs you can see how it sits on me I mentioned prices there and everything so for my HK I have bought a wine color scrub I bought black I bought gray and I bought bright pink from figs as well i tend not to wear to my age skin navy blue or any shade of blue because i don't want to look too clinical there because hk is a type of environment where you don't have patients you have residents and for them it's their home and we want to make it look less clinical so i don't want to look like a doctor there you know so i try to wear like pink on a weekend I wear my bright pink I'll show you how bright it is I wear my bright pink and I wear my wine color red and I get so many compliments from the residents they love to see bright colors I will be now wearing my funky scrubs from uh, Gorman as well they will love it um, we do have the same thing in HK on Fridays where you can wear funky scrubs as well um, but then throughout the week I try to wear just black and grey uh, from Airmed. I really love those ones because it's a color of um, my HK anyway. We have like pink and black for scrubs and then we have, if it's a formal uniform, a skirt and a shirt. Shirt is a grey color. That's why I bought from Airmed grey and black and that's all what I wear. So these are the colors. I hope that helps. The next question is how old was the oldest nursing student in your class i'm 35 now and i think i'm too old to start a nursing degree um like back at tife um look life at tife was different to the life at uni i should mention it from the beginning probably just to clarify that when i used to do my diploma of enrolled nursing and you may uh, notice this as well if you will go the same journey as i did starting from tafe and then go into uni um life at tafe was more friendlier and i used to know everyone in a class we would be friends with everyone we would chat on breaks we would go have lunch together we would always talk discuss everything we were so close and united so i pretty much knew everyone in the class and i would say that the oldest one that we had it was a lady she was 55 and she was changing her careers from admin work she done uh, she has done admin for years and years and years and then she decided to change it into healthcare. So she was the oldest in the class. She was a lovely lady, super bright. But then at uni, I didn't have that bond with um, students. And I don't think any actually had. I felt like at uni, some of the people would come already together as friends or a couple, whatever. A lot of people would not show up to classes at all. <laughs> so, and I felt like, uni life was so different compared to tithe everyone would be just for themselves preserved to themselves it was no unity between the students it was no connection or friendship it was very hard to develop uh, anything you know so yeah i don't know how oldest who was the oldest you know and how old uh was the oldest student at uni <laughs> to answer this question but at tithe yeah it was 55 so I started my change in careers when I was 33 and I have finished it um, so I've done three and a half years so I was fin I finished it nearly at 37 okay because I've done Thai full-time and then uni so it was like three years and a half altogether so I was nearly 37 so I finished my degree then I've done my grad so that I'm 39 now and I'm practicing second year as a registered nurse 
Um, I've just finished my grad a half a year or seven months ago, so yeah, it's like I'm not very young as you can see and I still have changed my career. So I think 35 is fine. It's not too old. I think it's fine. If you look at my students that I had at Thai, 55, and the person was still going for it. She's working as a year now back in Melbourne and she's, she's happy. She's really happy. Besides, in the nursing career, they will take you even, you, even if you are 60. <laughs> what is the retirement age now? 67? 66? I don't know. What is it now in Australia? So you have like another seven years to practice, even if you're 60. We are so short in nurses. Um, we always need nurses. Always. They will take you, even if you are 60. So yeah. If you have little kids at that age, um, as I mentioned in my previous video, just evaluate your life. I have given some advices for moms who have small kids, um, thinking about going to nurses and nursing career and stuff like that. So just um, watch my other videos. I have highlighted all of it there already. I gave my advices because people were asking me this question as well. Like I'm in my mid thirties, I have little kids, should I go to nursing? So just watch the other video. But yeah, 35 is it's still young. You're still a baby. All right, next question is, have you ever done a medication error? <laughs> um, yes, yes, I have. It wasn't a big error. It wasn't a big error. So it was during my, <laughs> it was during my um, three months, my first three months uh, of work in HK as a registered nurse. I have given endone as PRN to my patient where the order was cyst. Okay, so it wasn't something major, like the, the resident, not the patient, the resident was happy. <laughs> um, the, the reason how it happened, okay, um, so I was permanent back then, during that three months I was still permanent there, so I was allocated to a particular floor, so I knew all my um, all my residents and I was on my PM shift and it was a day when uh, when our uh, GPs they were doing their rounds in a facility so the doctor came in a morning shift and I was on PM that day uh, the doctor came on a morning shift and done some changes and has assist um, end on for that particular resident because uh, they were weaning her off the opioids and um, the nurse in the morning, they were short staffed, they were really busy, they forgot to hand over this to me. Okay, so when I was doing my, um, you know, medication administration, um, that resident has asked me to give them endom because she would always have that uh, at evenings. And I was in a rush and I didn't check that, I didn't check the the date of our order. I knew that that resident is always on end on every single day, you know. So I was like, okay, that's another day, you know, I should have checked the order because in each care, our orders is in a big folder, okay. Each, um, there is a section in a folder for each resident and it might have like three to four medication uh, charts. At the hospital, it's a little bit different. Every time you would give uh, a medication you literally looking at the order you know the only times when you would pay more uh, attention than usual to the date would be your insulin orders because sometimes doctors would forget to put the date on orders of insulin but every other medication literally has a date for it today okay or a stat dose for example you would be paying more attention to the date there um, or your IV but in HK it's a little bit different and I was in rush and I did not check the date of that order because when they seize it they tick the box and they write the date when it was seized. So I have given the medication and then um, and then my CEN, she emailed me the next day, I was off, she emailed me and she was like, hey, we were doing the medication count yesterday and we've noticed that Andron was given to the resident while it was seized action. I was like, oops. So I needed to do the risk man and yeah, that was, yeah, I mean like nobody died, it wasn't something bad, but still. It wasn't something good either you know what I mean so you need to pay attention more when you give medications to every single detail of an order to make sure that you're doing things correctly and you're safe 
So that was about it. That's the only mitigation that I have done. Uh, mitigation error. The next question is, um, I was told that hospitals request you to have at least one year of experience as a nurse before, you ha before they hire you. Is this true? Yes, it's true. From what I know and from my experience, it is true. Therefore, there is a um, grad program exists for this reason, because in order for you to get experience at hospital without having experience yet after graduation, you can apply for a grad program to step in to the hospital, to your clinical field. Um, so they do. Same as with private as well, they would need you to have at least one year of experience. And I have mentioned this in my previous videos. I have a whole video dedicated to what um, advantages and skills you can gain and bring with you from working in aged care when applying for a clinical field. Just watch that video. I will leave it for you guys in the description box below. It's a great video. I'm in details explaining you all the benefits of working in aged care for one year before you go into um, a hospital, to work in a hospital. So yeah, and then the second part of the question was, um, is this true? Yes, it is true. Yeah, from what I know, it is true. Aged care is a great place to get your experience or community services. They will take you, they will kiss your hands to work there. Okay, the next uh, question is, if so, um, it's from the same person, if so, would you recommend getting experience in aged care first? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, go for it. Aged care, as I said, is easy to get in. It's, um, it's a little bit hard environment because um, they always short staff. Um, I think it's like all across healthcare field these days, everyone's short staff. But... Um, it's a good environment because um, you will still get the support. Just try to choose good aged care. Like my first aged care where I started as AAN was very bad. The management, they were like inhuman factor towards their employees big time. They were not valuing their employees. When we were short staffed, they would never hire someone from agency to save the day and make it safe for everyone because they were uh, very stingy on money. So they were like managing every single cent. So that was very bad. The HK what I'm working in right now, they are perfect. They always hire agency if they are short. They don't really care about the money as long as everyone stays safe. They have enough of stuff on the floor. They're wonderful. And they have that human factor towards their employee. They're very sensitive. They're very supportive, very um, encouraging as well. I really, really like the management of the HK what I'm working at. Um, so yeah, definitely. If uh, you are comfortable working in HK, go get you one year of experience there, learn as much as you can, and then go and apply for a position in hospital. And they will take you. They don't really care where you get your first experience, whether it's aged care, community services, disability, GP clinic, whatever. As long as you've got some basic knowledge of medication administration, how to follow policies and procedure, how to be safe, that's all what they need. And the last question is, it's a little bit clinical actually, but let's just bring it in as the end of this video. With supplemental insulin, do you give that in addition to the regular insulin? Um, so this question was under the video where I have highlighted for you guys management of diabetes and um, insulin administration. I will leave that video in the description box below. I went through the chart with you guys together, highlighting and emphasizing how to manage hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia in patients. And this question was coming out from that video. So um, you only give supplemental insulin together with regular insulin if both of them are charted and the orders are valid and you look at the diet. For example, if someone has charted morning insulin and then they have a sliding scale and uh, the sliding scale has a ticked box for giving it with meals then you will have a sliding scale saying that from for example uh, BGL from 0 to 8 MMOL you would give 0 units of insulin if the BGL let's say from 8 to 12 
uh, then you would give two units. If it's from 12 to 14 or to 16, you would give four units. So you would go and you would check the BGL of your patient and let's say they are sitting at nine, okay? So in this case, you will need to check, is the patient eating? Is the patient going to eat? I usually check the BGL 15 minutes prior the meal coming and then I would look at the patient. Is the patient going to eat? Because you only give supplemental insulin if the patient is eating. That's why it has a tick with meals. So I would wait for a couple of minutes, you know, to see, okay, is the patient going to start eating? Yes, they started, just give it another minute or two, seeing if they're actively eating, and then I'll give the insulin, okay? And then you will look, okay, the BGL is nine. You will look at the nine, um, on your sliding scale and that falls into um, a bracket of 8 to 12 let's say so you would give two units because 8 to 12 as example I just gave you earlier um, says you would give two units and usually doctor indicates the amount of units for each and every bracket and you will need to have a date as well for your regular and for your supplemental insulin so you would then give two units um, in addition to your regular morning dose of insulin they could be it could be two different insulins it could be morning dose of regular could could be combination of slow and fast acting and your sliding scale supplemental insulin could be only fast acting let's say nova rapid or nova mix whatever so only in those cases you would give it together you need to look at the orders sometimes the patient would have only supplemental insulin to be given and let's say only regular optician at night before bedtime so in this case you would check your bgl and then according to the number of bgl right you will give the amount of units that is uh, from the supplemental um, insulin according to the brackets. I hope that helps. Um, this is very clinical, very clinical question, but that would be the last question for this video, guys. If you do have more clinical questions, uh, feel free to ask me. I will answer them according to my knowledge and to my experience, so leave them in a comment section below. And if you have more questions in relation to studies or to work in the nursing field as well, leave them down below or you can DM me all your questions to my Instagram and I can see them there very quickly and I will add them in my next videos. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next videos. Bye!